This is what you need to know about a paired sample t-test. This allows us to compare the means of related or matched samples. Now there's two ways that we could create these paired samples for our t-test. One is to use repeated measures, in which each individual is measured twice. This is very common with a before and after setup. So we have the same group of men who is weighed before an exercise program, then they work out for six weeks and we measure them again after the exercise program. Hopefully we see that the overall weight of the exercise group has gone down. This is called a dependent measure because the second measurement depends upon the first. Your ending weight is a function of your starting weight. It in some ways depends upon where you started. And so using a dependent measure or repeated measures t-test allows each subject to serve as their own control group. Your baseline is then compared to your change after the treatment. But there is a second way that we could set up two groups. It's called a matched sample. And that is where we take subjects in our experimental group and we match them purposely with control subjects who share the same characteristics. This is very common with twin studies, where we put the twins into one of two groups. If the dependent variable we're studying is naturally occurring, maybe we just group the twins by the twin who exercises more and the twin who exercises less. Or perhaps we assign one twin to one group and the other twin to the second group, and we're going to compare their scores on a dependent measure. So each one, each twin is being paired with the other. Another way we could do this matched sample is to find someone who is similar in some ways to the person in our experimental group. So we're doing a study about heart patients and some drug or some outcome or some measurement. Well, who do we compare them to? What we do is we find hip replacement patients in another part of the hospital and we pair these two together. So our hip replacement patients are going to be the control group, where the heart patients are going to be the experimental group. We may not even do anything with the, in fact, we wouldn't do anything with the control group. They may or may not even know they're part of the study, but we're going to compare them. However, we've purposely matched them. So for instance, if one of our heart patients, we start with our first heart patient, who is a male, a smoker, weighs 280 pounds. We take those same characteristics and we find a hip replacement patient who is also a male, a smoker, weighs about the same amount, and we match them together. So what we're trying to do is control for variability between the patients. There's a technique called propensity score matching, where we consciously pair up members of the control group with the experimental group. This is often used when testing rare variables, such as, for instance, testing sociopaths in a prison setting. We have to consciously pair them with some other group that is very similar. So the paired samples t-test is a parametric procedure because the sample is drawn from a population. But here we are interested in whether the average difference between two measures is significantly different from zero. So think about weight loss. Have you ever decided to go on a diet? Do you know someone that has? If we took everyone who at the beginning of the year made a New Year's resolution to get in shape and lose weight, and we measured their weight three months later, what would we find? We'd probably find that some had lost weight, but others hadn't. Maybe some gained weight. If there really was no difference, what we'd find is that if we added the weight loss to the weight gain, it all pretty much just zeroes out. It's just a wash. So the average difference would be zero. What we would want to do with a before and after study is find out whether the average difference in the after condition is significantly different from our starting point. So if you're familiar with the TV show The Biggest Loser, they bring on contestants who are overweight and many months later they've lost a lot of weight. So let's imagine that we have two contestants, each of whom loses 100 pounds over the course of the show. 
Now, the actual weight loss is the same, 100 pounds. But let's say that one person starts off weighing 210 and the other person starts off weighing 400 pounds. Even though the amount of weight loss is the same, it means something different. It's almost half of the body weight of the first person, but about a quarter of the body weight of the second person. So the impact of the difference is really a function of the person's starting weight. So when we're using a paired sample t-test, we have a before and after group, each of which has a mean and standard deviation, but they're drawn from the same sample. Now it's important to note that the paired sample t-test also goes by other names, sometimes depending upon how it is being used. So you may also hear it being called a matched sample t-test, a related sample t-test, or a repeated measures t-test. In every case, what we are measuring is a difference score. Now the difference score is really the post minus the pre. It is a measure of the amount of change between the measurements. And it is computed for each individual in the sample. What we start with as our null hypothesis is that the average difference score, if you add up all the gains and losses, it's all gonna average out to zero. So the average difference for the entire population mu sub d, or mean difference, equals zero. And because the same group is being measured twice, we don't need to test for equality of variances. So SPSS is not going to produce a Levine's test when we use this repeated measures t-test.